aren't just for show. You think that wings are for clout? Think again. This thing could save your build or send it off a cliff. Therefore, we bring in arrow. What is a wing? A wing is an aerodynamic feature that helps direct airflow for better grip to create downforce, helping a car stay planted to the road at high speeds. Wings are often mounted on the rear of a vehicle, especially on race cars. Wings can also appear at the front in the form of smaller aero elements or full width setups, like on time attack cars or even Formula One. Visually, a wing resembles an inverted airplane wing, and that's no accident. Airplane wings are designed to generate lift, allowing a plane to rise off the ground. But automotive wings, on the other hand, do the opposite. They're engineered to push the car downward as air flows over them. This inverted profile increases the vertical load, which improves grip, especially during cornering, braking, and acceleration. But it's not just about looking aggressive. Wings serve a very real performance function. When tuned correctly, they can dramatically improve a car's handling dynamics. However, there's a trade-off. More downforce usually means more drag and that can reduce top speed. That's why shape, size, and the angle of the wing must strike a balance depending on the types of driving, whether it's street, track, or even high-speed runs. Morning as this BMW continues to move along. So when did wings show up on cars? Well, let's break it down. As aviation technology matured after World War II, engineers gained a deep understanding of lift, drag, and airflow management. Then in 1966, the Pioneer came out the Chaparral 2E. Jim Hall shows up and basically it was a science project on wheels. This thing had a massive wing mounted to the top and get this, it was adjustable with a pedal in the cockpit, straight out of aviation. Inspired by airplane flaps, Hall figured out how to push the car into the ground on command and boom, downforce. Two years later, Formula One took notes and took it up a notch. Lotus, Ferrari, and Brabham they all strapped wings onto their cars like fighter jets. We're talking skyscraper wings mounted directly to the suspension arms. Sketchy? Absolutely. Effective? Yeah, I'd say so as well. But in 1969, there was a lot of chaos. These high mounted wings started snapping mid race, causing brutal crashes. The FIA had seen enough. Mid season, they slammed the brakes on this. Literally a new rule, no more suspension mounted wings. An aero had to be chassis mounted from now on. The 1970s is where aero gets serious. Teams started using wind tunnels, airflow sensors, and real data, and there was no more guesswork, just physics. Cars like the Porsche 917 and the Lancia, Lancia Stratos, <laughs> proved that downforce had to be engineered and not just bolted on. By the 80s and 90s, wings went mainstream. The Ferrari F40, one of my favorites, the Supra, and the Evo. Even street builds started rocking functional aero, not just for looks, but for legit performance. Ever taken a freeway on-ramp just a little too fast? Suddenly, the rear of your car starts to feel floaty? That's aerodynamic lift in action, and it's trying to send you sideways, at higher speeds, especially in long, sweeping corners. And without a wing, that airflow can reduce the load on your tires, and that means less grip. But add a properly tuned wing, now that same air is working for you, not just against you. It presses the car into the pavement, it increases traction, and it keeps the rear end planted when things get fast. You'll feel the same difference in those fast, committed corners, where grip makes the difference between a clean line and an insurance claim. <laughs> this is where Aero earns its paycheck. Not just at the track, but every time you push the limit on the street. You don't need 800 horsepower, guys. Just the right corner, a wing, and it's doing its job. So yeah, a wing isn't just a flex. Hold up. It's not just a part that you bolt on for clout. It's the difference between grip and guesswork, basically staying planted or spinning out. Born from aviation, refined by motorsports, now part of the streetcar arsenal, whether you're chasing lap times or carving canyons or just want a car that feels planted at speed. A wing, when done right, changes everything because at the end of the day, power's great, but control, that's what keeps you fast. But not all wings are created equal. Some are built for looks, some basic function, and some are engineered for real performance. So let's break down the different types of wings. 
First, we have trunk spoilers. These sit on the trunk lid. They're clean, easy to install, often look great, but they sit low in the wake of a car's roof line, which means that they're not catching the cleanest air, and that limits how much downforce they can actually generate. Then we have high mount wings. They raise the wing into faster, cleaner airflow, and you get better performance. These are more common on track builds or serious race cars. They offer adjustability, more downforce, and more control. And then there's swan neck. This is where engineering gets smart. Instead of mounting the wing from below, a swan neck design mounts it from above, just like the name suggests. And there's a reason for that. In any proper wing, the underside is where most of the magic happens. This is where you generate downforce. But in a traditional bottom mount wing, the uprights disrupt the airflow on that underside, right where you don't want the turbulent. The swan neck solves this by mounting the supports from the top. They leave the entire underside of the wing blade clean and uninterrupted. The result? Smooth airflow. Nice. More efficient pressure differential and more consistent usable downforce, especially at high speeds or through fast corners. And this isn't just theory, it's proven on track. You'll find swan neck wings on endurance cars like the Porsche 911 RSR, the Ferrari 488 GTE, and the GT3 or GT500 race cars. These aren't built for Instagram though. They're built to survive hours of racing with peak efficiency. At Adro, we apply the same principle to our carbon aero packages. These swan neck wings, they aren't just for looks. They're CFD tested, track developed, and built to give real aerodynamic results. More grip, better corner balance, and less instability at speed. So when people ask, why run a wing on a streetcar? Well, the answer is simple. Because grip matters, because control matters, and because when you're pushing the limits on the way to your favorite cars and coffee or on a canyon road, you want the car to work with you, not against you. From early race cars in the 60s to GT machines and wind tunnel testing street builds today, the wing has evolved into one of the most important tools in real world performance. And swan neck wings, they're the latest evolution to that legacy. They aren't about flex, they're about function. And that's why we build them the way we do here at Adro, with intention, with data, and with purpose. Because at this level, aero isn't an accessory. It's the difference between holding your line or losing it. Awesome guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that breakdown on what aero is and all the details behind it, including some of the history. If you really like content like this, let us know. We'd like to do more breakdowns on certain parts. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. Maybe I'll see you in the comments and hit you with a reply. This is your boy Preston, and I'm out. <laughs>